Alright, what's going on, people? Hope all is well with you. Let's say... A... X. Clear. So, what I want to do is, I want to give you a, um... Quickie about FDisk, alright? A lot of people know about FDisk. Some people don't. Okay? Now... FDisk is a partition program. Which we kind of all know that. But, um... The good thing about FDisk is you can run it from anywhere. Okay? So you don't need to go root around and find, um... A departed live CD or anything else like that. You'll need to go find, uh... Parted, live magic, whatever... Whatever else is out there. You have FDisk... FDisk, right, in your utilities. Okay? And it's convenient because, like I said, you don't have to go find anything. And you can partition on the fly. Okay? You don't need to stop, shut down insert a disk or anything else like that and it's not really that hard to get uh, get used to okay so if I say something like F disk here F disk I can throw an L into it with the L switch that's a list command okay and all that does is it lists out oh my god I don't know what happened there all it does is it lists out um, all your partitions on your device Okay, you see here I have SDA 1 through 9. Okay, I am loaded to deals with operating systems. So let's say this. We'll say SSH. I want to go into a box I have here so we can do some F disk in a nice, clean, sanitary environment. Oh, I'm not connected. I am not connected. <laughs> connected now. Okay. So say, yes, I do want to connect, please. It's going to take forever. It's not really that hard to get used to. Now, there's variants of FDisk. There's PDisk and CFDisk. I don't use CFDisk. I don't know how to. I've never used it. I just use regular FDisk. PFDisk, I know, is a uh, old Max run PFDisk, which is like an FDisk, but just their version of uh, FDisk maybe old Unix, I'm not sure. Okay, so now if I come here and I say something like F disk, and I can say L and list it out. Okay, okay. By the way, if you want to know what to run, if you hit that, um, that's not very helpful at all, but you need to add something to it. Okay, in this case, L just be for a list. So, if I list these out, you'll see that I have three hard drives. I have a HDA, I have a HDB, and I have a HDD, 60 gigs. Okay. Now, mind you, don't get used to what they're called. They will change if you ever blow one up, Okay, move it around as far as the serial cables go. Um, even if you add a partition, or even if you add a device, these could change. Okay. So, for instance, I had HDA devices and Actually, no, that's a lie. But still, they could move, okay? So, if I moved HDA, dev HDA, my 20 gig, if I moved that to my... If I hooked it up in a different way where I got the slave and master um, jumpers off, it would become HDB, okay? Or some drives, uh, some SATA drives, you plug them into the board, they become something else, okay? So, don't really get used to exactly what they're called, all right? but take into account when you're working on them what they're called okay but don't depend on those names always staying constant so I want to work on let's say fdisk dev hdd okay so I hit that now I'm in fdisk uh, mode and I'll say p stands for print and I can print out the contents of that device so these are the partition tables on this device. Now say, if I wanted to erase this device and do something else, I could do that by saying delete, enter. Ask me what partitions do I want to delete. I want to delete partition 1. I want to delete partition 2. I want to delete, and then it automatically selects partition 3. Okay, so I will say quit, clear, 
and I'll go back in it and see if anything happened. And you notice nothing happened, okay? And the reason is that quit will just exit without saving. Write will actually write to that device that you want to operate on. So let's say delete again. One, delete, two, delete, three is already selected. And I can say write. You notice this is taking a couple seconds here. Okay. And normally under any sic certain situation, here you go now, okay? It's empty. Your drive is free of partitions. And under normal cer certain... Uh, uh, I can't talk. Under normal circumstances, whenever I do anything to the partition table, I like to reboot, okay? So I'll delete and I'll reboot. I'll make and then I'll reboot another part. And then when I want to build on it, I know that nothing is capable of screwing me up, okay? And you may get an error sometimes saying that you need to reboot for these changes to be made, all right? Sometimes you won't get that error, but I like to do it as a safe measure. It's always good to have your partitions in order before undertaking any type of installation on them. Okay, so that's that. Now, F this does not have a clear key, okay? So that's not going to work. So I'll just say clear, get the stuff off the screen, print, and you can see we have a free empty partition. Now, F disk, uh, you can see F disk commands by typing in M, alright? And it'll list out all the available commands that you have here. And there's also an extended, an extra functionality for experts, okay? I And that would be X, okay? And then the same thing with that, you can type in M again and it'll show out the extended functionality for that. I usually don't do X at all, okay? Um, it specifies things like cylinder heads, you can change the heads, uh, cylinders, and there's some other stuff on here, sectors within the hard disk and blah blah blah, okay? I haven't really messed with that, and that's okay. So, let me quit that, clear, F disk, and I'm going to say M for show out the rest of these. A lot of these you really don't have to pay attention to. Um, you don't use them on a regular basis. Some of them you do, some of them you don't, okay? Toggle bootable flag, you can use that on a regular basis. I have used that before. Uh, edit BSD bis disk label, I haven't used that one. C is toggle DOS, compatibility. DOS comp compatibility flag, my god, what is wrong with me? I have not used that one. Delete, yes. L, yes. Um, print, you can print the menu. N is to add a new partition. O, nobody uses that. Let's say P, we use that. T, we use that. And that's it. Or right, we use that one too. On a regular basis. So let's say clear. F disk. I want to print it out again to look at it. Now let's say I wanted to make a new partition here on this device. So I would then say new. And then when you have primary or extended. There's no difference between a primary partition and an extended partition. Only that primary partitions are kind of like, let's say, quote, old school. They only allow us to have one through four partitions on a drive. Extended partitions act the same as a primary partition would but it allows you to create more than four partitions on a drive. So that's how I got nine partitions on my drive. And extended partitions seems to be a enigma and no-no as far as tutorials go because I had a problem creating that. I was not sure, but they're not hard at all. So let's say I want to make a primary partition. I'm going to call it partition one. Now you're, now you're prompted with the default. So first cylinder is at, as you can see here, 1. The last one would be all the way to the end, which would be at 116, 336, okay? I don't want to go all the way to the end. That's going to take up my whole hard drive. So I can say, start at default position 1, or default cylinder 1, true, and now I can specify my size. So that's a plus 10 gigs. Or you could say megabytes, or you could say kilobytes, okay? But remember, it is case specific case sensitive and that G stands for gigs 
how do I know that? You can look here. This is the way that you add as far as size goes. You have to say capital M, or you can say K here. Gigs isn't specified, but it's there. So let's say print. Okay. Now don't forget, in order for anything to stick, we have to write it. Okay. That looks good. We'll print it out again. We can see that that's there. Um, and also, too, we see that we have some information. So this starts at um, cylinder 1. Okay, and it ends up here on 19, 330, or 377, okay, that's where it's located, and the blocks that it has, if you broke this down, this could be some type of size information, which is true, I think this is in bytes, okay, um, you'll notice that it doesn't come out to be an equal 10 gigs, it's actually a little bit less, because, um, some gigs were allocated, or some megabytes kilobytes, whatever. It's allocated um, for the uh, information that the disk had the right to it. Okay, so you won't get the full. If you wanted 10 gigs, um, I'd say specify, say, 11 maybe. You're going to have a little loss, okay? And you notice here that there's something called an ID, okay? And this is our ID, which means Linux, okay? There's only a few IDs that we use on a on a regular basis, and you can type you can print those IDs out by hitting L here. Now, if you type in L, you'll see that these are all the types of partitions that you can create with F disk. We have a HPFS NTFS partition, and that ID is seven. Okay, so that's your Windows partition. Old Minix, Minix. Um, 82 swap, which is very common, and 83 Linux, okay? And F this defaults to 83 Linux, um, kind of like all the time, okay? So, which <laughs> definition of default. So, the, you don't have to memorize all these codes, okay? I just go to them as I need them and try to look them up. But I do know that three codes that we use on a regular basis, actually four codes I guess you could say, would be F or 5 for extended, you use 83, okay, 82 for a swap partition, and 7 for overwriting your windows, <laughs> or creating your windows, it doesn't matter. But you also have um, FAT16. You have FAT file systems here, VFAT's down below, uh, 195 FAT, okay? Okay. So now let's say quit, and I want to clear this up. Print again. Okay, so we have a Linux partition here, and now let's give it a swap, okay? Now, there's a big debate over swap. Should I swap, should I not swap? And it's a default standard that everybody should swap, right? Right. Well, that's kind of wrong, because <clears throat> what happens when you actually swap to a hard disk, okay, that means that you don't have enough resources to actually carry out the scheduled task. So it has to find a place to stick files and everything else like that, so it doesn't RAM crash, okay? And in order to do that, it can utilize something called a swap partition to stick files into temporarily and grab them when it has free time to do that. So if you did not have a swap partition, your system would die after it ran out of memory. But with the swap partition, it can store files temporarily in that swap partition and use it as, I don't want to say virtual memory because I don't know what I'm talking about there, but maybe so. Okay? But that's what a swap is good for. Now, question. When are you going to swap? If you have 8 gigs of RAM on your machine, there's no way you're going to swap unless you do some really heavy heavy duty stuff okay swapping is always possible it depends on your resources of your machine and how much draw you have on that machine okay swapping would be more likely on a machine with say 512 ram than it will be on something with 4 gigs of ram okay 
but at the same time it doesn't matter because if you're compiling super codes to the universe on 4 gigs of RAM and you're drawing at least 19 gigs you're going to swap out or you're going to need swap okay okay so on a lot of my machines I don't ever anticipate on using swap I kind of have a general idea of what I want to do and compiling launch codes or <laughs> something that would be enormous is not what I want to do so I don't think I'll ever exhaust as much rem memory on my machine okay okay but a lot of operating systems um, default to create a swap automatically okay and a lot of the mainstream operating systems and when I say that the um, the ones that you really don't have too much say in config well they all have a say in configuring but the CD based installers okay a lot of those that you can walk away from um, suggest recommend and um, set up a swap um, file system for you okay so let's create that now we'll say new primary 2 okay so now you can see that this here is selected to say I gotta turn this down this here is selected to say start at the first cylinder first cylinder starts off where the last cylinder was okay so if you look up here you can see here that this cylinder ended at 19377 now you can see here that this one says 19378 would be our next cylinder okay I would not recommend saying where to start at this current location here um, this is only going to specify the size of your next partition now if you started too far up or even too far down well I, I don't think you could start too far down but if you start too far up you would have gaps in your partition table and that's not really good it's not really efficient so usually on this one here I like to just hit enter okay so it's using the default value of the next cylinder available which is 19378 now we can add how big would we want it I'm going to add me 512 gigabytes or megabytes of swap. Okay? <clears throat> now, how do you know how much swap that you need? Right? Okay. It's a rule of thumb that maybe for swap, swap should be your size of RAM times 2. So if you have 8 gigs of RAM, you're going to have 16 gigs of swap. It doesn't really make too much sense to me. There's a lot of theory and a lot of dogma wrapped up in the swap and even a little bit of swap 20 megabytes of swap may be good for a system that needs swap but if you're not anticipating on having heavy system draw or ever running out of memory while doing your normal daily task you can avoid that so let's say 512 RAM okay and I'm gonna write that now I want to say clear I can say F disk dev HDD. I can say print. And you'll notice here now. You'll notice here that we can bust this up here. This is actually not 512. This is 500. Some of it got allocated to something else, but this is 540 or that number of um, megabytes allocated. Okay, okay. But now notice too that this is only a Linux 83 type of system okay we need to change that and we can change that to a 82 without having to do anything else just type in T um, that's going to change the partitions ID okay which partition do we want to change we want to change 2 and say if I don't know the codes I'm going to type in L it's going to list out all the codes for me and I'll notice here right away that 82 is Linux swap partition so here I can enter in 82, hit print, and you can see that our partition is now changed to a Linux swap partition. Okay? Easy as stat. Right quit. Actually, does it take right quit? I don't remember. I know it takes right. It does take right quit. 
So now let's go in and say something else to about our partition. Say that. Say that. We have these two partitions here. It's our Linux partition. Say if we had uh, Linux from scratch, say, was here and we wanted to have a swap partition here okay okay now on a lot of operating systems it defaults to have a bootable device okay I could show you but it's on my other side but a lot of um, do I want to say GUI based installers but that's not really the word a lot of mainstream distros, okay, set you up already so that you have a bootable device and you have a swap partition and everything else. Now, you don't need to really specify a bootable device when you're running in your operating system, okay? And the reason is, is that when your operating system boots up, okay, what your BIOS does is it goes, it goes through self-checks, it goes through posts and everything else like that, and then it hands over code, or it looks for code, in your device that you have set to run. Okay? So it's going to go, if it's pointing to, say, HDA1, okay, it's going to look in HDA1, but it's going to look in the first 400 megabytes or so. Okay? Actually, I think it might look a little deeper than that, but not too much more deeper. But what I'm saying is, Grub, when you install Grub or when you install a bootloader, okay, it writes boot code that the BIOS can understand to the first 400 megabytes ish of the operating system, or not the operating system, but to that partition. Not the partition either, but to that drive. If you specified Grub to install over top of HDD, okay, it's going to write boot code that the BIOS can understand and pick up on and hand off control to it's gonna look for that in the first 400 megabytes that's where grub boot code is okay so when you specify a boot partition you're not really doing anything but saying um, these are where the megabytes are okay okay so we can do that because of uh, safe measures and that's just how they've done it before we can toggle and we can say we can add a boot partition or a bootable partition by saying A that would be toggle um, toggle partition 1 I want to make that a bootable partition if I hit P now we see we have an asterisk here okay and this means that this is a bootable partition now keep this in mind because I'm going to show you later on about where bootable partitions can be. So now say, let's write that. Now say we used our Linux from scratch operating system for a very long time and it's great and everything's super. Because it always is. Let me clear this up. And say we wanted to add another partition. Say we have, uh, I don't know, kids or a girlfriend or something like that. Who's really not down with doing a whole bunch of command line fooey. And just wants something easy. Okay? So now we can add a new partition, primary. And we'll call it partition 3. Partition 3, default would begin um, at cylinders 2371. Okay? I want to... And how big do I want to make that partition? Let's make that partition 20 gigabytes. Okay? And we'll say print. So now, we can do that. That's okay. And if we said write, we can have that as a partition. Now we can install whatever we want to to it that may be easier for somebody to use. Or even if you're like me, a madman who likes to quad and five boot, maybe you want to do that. Okay, so now we have a new partition here that we can um, go ahead and format and install our operating system to. Okay? Now, say if we 
don't have Linux from scratch on this machine anymore, which would be a total shame. I don't know why anybody would do that. We're going to say delete, say partition one, print. Okay? You see, partition one is gone. We have gotten rid of it. Also, by the way, you can have one swap partition and share that swap partition throughout many OS's. Okay? And it's as simple as editing the Etsy F tab to point to where your swap partition is. So you don't need one swap partition for every OS that you have. You can always share that swap partition between many OS's that you have. So if I say dev HDD and I print, the LFS is gone. Okay? Well, of course, I love LFS and it just broke my heart to do that. So let's say Let's add another partition. We're going to say new primary partition one. And yes, I do want to begin at cylinder one. Enter. And let me say I want to add, now I want to make it 12 gigs. Okay. Notice you're going to get this error here because your blocks and cylinders are going to be out of line. Okay cannot write more than you already had okay so take this in mind when you're partitioning to kind of plan ahead where you want your partitions and how big they're going to be because you can't overflow into the next cylinders and blocks okay because that's already occupied by another partition we can go smaller and say 9 gigs but we're not we're going to say 10 gigs plus 10 G. Print. Okay. Let's say right. Now, in between every write or every delete, I always like to reboot my machine. And if this was the case that we we're actually doing something here, you would see a, a frequent set of reboots. Okay. So now we have that. Now let's say that instead of making HDD1 bootable, we're going to make HDD3 bootable, okay? And we can do that by toggling a boot flag on on a third partition, HDD3, which happens to be, say, our mint machine. And now if we print it out, we can see that this is targeted here as a bootable drive. Even though it would have been a bootable drive anyway if we installed Grub correctly over top of the hard drive. That means that you're going to install it to HDD, which is going to be to the first 400 megabytes. That's where the boot code is going to be. So this is actually pointing back to the first 400 megabytes of where your boot code is going to be. Unless you installed Grub to HDD3, okay, then it's only going to be here. Mm, I think that might be right, or that might be wrong. But Grub installs to, the, okay. So that's that. Now I can hit print again and let me say I want to change this boot device. I want to toggle I want to toggle it back to one. I hit print. Now notice here you have two pointers going in two different directions, okay? But if your grub is installed properly, they're both pointing in the same direction. If you installed grub to say HDD3 then you would have and you installed the, the boot code to HDD3 you're going to have it going into HDD3 so let's go ahead and we can toggle again we can turn off HDD3 print okay so now it's set to say if you had a boot partition it would be here at HDA1 the boot flag is set there, even though a boot flag is not necessary if you have Grub installed properly. Right? Right. <laughs> right, figuratively and literally. So, let's say clear. Clear. Now also too, print, you can also add another partition to this here. I'm going to say primary. It's already selecting primary 4. Now, default location is correct. I want to add 10 gigs 
and I want to add let's say print instead of Linux I'm gonna create a Windows machine so let's say L this will list out our codes if you notice here 7 is for NTFS which is a primary Windows file system so down here in the codes I'm gonna type in 7 and for help uh, list out codes I can say change the partition ID by typing T partition 124 4 and let me say 82 or no 7 okay now if I print out that partition table you will see that I have a Windows OS installed or not installed but partitioned for NTFS right okay so now normally if you're not a madman like me and don't like having 10 operating systems um, you're stuck you can't go any farther with it with a partitioning scheme as you can see here when you hit new for new partition it says you must delete some partitions and add an extended partition first and that's exactly what it needs you to do so like I said before an extended partition and a primary partition are very similar I'm sure there's some differences to them okay um, when I looked for help on installing extended partitions I was dismayed by how much help there was not so an extended partition allows you to escape the bounds of one through four as the amount of partitions you can have on your device with a extended partition you can go from one to I don't know how many I'm assuming it's less than 20 or less than 40 okay so the primary partitions you can only have one through four so it says here I have to delete something to do that so I'm going to delete partition 4 which happens to be my Windows OS I'll print it out see that it's empty and I want to make a new partition extended or primary I'm going to say extended print okay so now it says here first cylinder for the extended partition now mind you an extended partition is nothing more than a big giant holder wrapper or a box okay imagine that you have say a box that's going to be your whole extended partition and within that box you can cut up certain segments and then you can have more partitions within that box divider or that big giant partition okay so when it says first cylinder of my extended partition is default into 55912 four yes and the last cylinder I want of that can be all the way to the end of my hard drive okay I'll type in print okay now since the extended partition ID or type since the extended partition type is only a box which means that we can then fill it in so if I hit new now I can say new notice that it's defaulting me to 59124 and if I look here it's actually at 59124 okay but look at these look at these uh, cylinder IDs here or cylinder sizes okay it goes from 59124 all the way to 116 um, 336 okay so like I said it's only a wrapper you put partitions inside of the extended partition okay so new partition notice here we don't get prompted anymore for a primary or extended because we're out of primaries and we can only have one extended so first cylinder would be that and I like that and let me say I want a 10 gig partition now I'll say print now you'll notice I have a HDD5 that's a 10 gig partition okay so now I can go ahead and I'm going to change that partition to number five. I want to change that to a um, LFS partition. Okay, I can print that out, and I can say a new partition again. 
default for cylinders, fine. I want 10 more gigs. Okay. And this one I'm going to make a... Hmm. Am I going to make this one? I don't know. This is called a Linux partition. So I'll leave it alone. Okay. So I can have something else in HDA6. And I want a new partition again. I think I'm going to run out of room here. Enter. 10. Plus 10 gigs. Out of range. Okay. So now I'm out of physical space on my drive. How about plus 8 gigs? Okay. So I have 8 gigs of space I can add. And I'll say print. Now you see I have 7 devices on my hard drive. Okay. Now, an extended partition is not only good for if you want to, for instance, with me, I have uh, Linux, or I have Mint, I got Slackware, um, LFS 6.9 or 6.8, um, Ubuntu, and I'm about to have LFS 7.3 on, okay, so I think that's 5, maybe I can't count, 5 or 6. But you don't have to have five or six operating systems. That's not only good with part, with extended partitions are good for. It. The other thing extended partitions are good for is say if you wanted to create um, different mount points for different folders and users and everything else like that. You can have a user folder, mount folder. Um, you can have a root folder and everything else. They can all be on different partitions. That way you could mount those throughout any other OS that you may have. Okay, without really having to change that operating system too much through your etf stab okay there's all kinds of different mounting system mounting arrays and all kind of um, partition schemes that you could come up with okay but that's that so what else can I talk about on partitions hmm nothing that's all extended partitions are everything is cool and that's the basics on FDisk. So, have a great day. I can't get out of here. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> See you guys in the next one.